In the previous video, we looked at how we could approximate the construction and installation costs of a wind farm, and we also looked at how much income a given wind farm was likely to generate. In this tutorial, we're going to repeat the process, but in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at a solar photovoltaic farm. So first of all, we'll look at an overview of the costs, and then we'll look at a cost approximation for a 20 megawatt average output installation. And again, it's average output, not capacity. We'll recap the different types of income and we'll come up with an income approximation for our 20 megawatt installation. We'll discuss the break even point for our solar farm. And we're going to finish by looking at something called the levelized cost of electricity, which takes operational costs into consideration. So as with our wind farm, there are a number of different costs associated with constructing our solar farm. We still have our planning and feasibility costs. We still have the costs of our civil works because we still need to get components to site. We still have the costs of network upgrades and cabling costs because our solar farm needs to be connected to the grid. And we also have the cost of the solar panels themselves. And the cost of the solar panel in relation to the project costs is roughly 35% of the overall cost. Now the big difference with solar farms, as we've seen in earlier tutorials, is that solar panels produce DC current and we need AC current. So therefore we have the additional costs of inverters and inverters account for around 10% of the overall project costs. So they're quite expensive pieces of equipment. So now we can make a cost approximation for our 20 megawatt average output installation. And we're going to use the same approach as before. We're going to use average data because there's lots of different variables that can impact on the cost of a specific installation. And the first set of data we're going to use is from the Solar Trade Association. Now, just to explain this table, on the left hand side, we have CAPEX, which is capital expenditure. OPEX, which is operational expenditure, and total project lifetime costs, which is the sum of the two. But for comparison with our wind turbine project, we're only going to be looking at the capital expenditure. We can actually see that the operational expenditure over the 25 years is relatively small in comparison. This 640,000 here would be spread across 25 years. Now we're also going to use an average because here we have data from 2016 and here we have expected or projected data for 2020. Now all of these costs for capital expenditure are in thousands of pounds per megawatt of power. Okay so we're looking at capital expenditure and we're looking at capital expenditure as an average between 2016 and 2020. So we have two values 848 and 724. But the first thing we need to establish is what capacity of solar farm do we need? We know the capital expenditure requirements for given outputs, but we don't know what our capacity output is. Now, using the same method as before, we want an average output of 20 megawatts. But we know that the average capacity factor for solar farms is around 10%. So in order to produce an average power output of 20 megawatts, we actually need an installation with a capacity of 200 megawatts. 10% of 200 megawatts gives us our average output of 20 megawatts. So we need to build a solar farm with a capacity of 200 megawatts. If we refer back to our table of data, we're looking at capital expenditure. We have capital expenditure in 2016 and we have capital expenditure projected in 2020. And we're going to use the average of those two values but that's the cost per megawatt. So we need to do the following. The average between 848 and 724 is 786. All I've done is add the two values and divide by two to get the middle value. So the average cost per megawatt is 786,000 pounds. But we need a capacity of 200 megawatts. 786 times 200 gives us 157 million. So already we can see that that's roughly 50% higher than with our wind turbines. But let's look at a second set of data. And this data here is actually from the government department 
the Department of Energy and Climate Change. And if we look here in 2018, if we scan up until we reach the line and then scan across, we can see that the average cost per megawatt is somewhere in the order of £775,000. So again, we start with our requirement of 200 megawatts. We have our average cost of £775,000 per megawatt times our 200 megawatt installation, and we get an approximation very close to our previous approximation of £155 million to construct that solar farm. So once again, we've looked at an overview of the costs associated with constructing our solar farm, and we've made an approximation on how much our 20 megawatt average output installation is likely to cost. Next, let's look at our different types of income. And again, this is just a recap. We could have income from feed-in tariffs. Well, for the reasons we mentioned in the earlier video, a 20 megawatt installation isn't eligible for feed-in tariffs. So we can disregard that one. We have the export or wholesale value. And when we looked at data for this, we talked about how volatile the wholesale price was. We saw fluctuations in a given week from around £52 per megawatt hour, as high as £71 per megawatt hour. So although we could sell our electricity in the wholesale market, the amount of income that would generate is quite volatile. We saw a further breakdown of this over a longer period, so from 2010 to 2018, and we saw huge changes in the wholesale price of electricity, dropping as low as £35 per megawatt hour in 2016, and peaking at around £56 per megawatt hour in 2018. Actually, if we look more closely at 2016, in 2016 we saw lows of £35 and highs of £56. So in that given year, there was huge variations in the wholesale price of electricity. We also talked about something called the offset value, which is for energy companies who both generate and supply electricity. And what it means is they can produce their own electricity and buy less in the volatile wholesale market. So they can potentially purchase wholesale electricity at better prices. But for the purpose of our approximation, we're going to use exactly the same method and data as before. We had some data around the export price of electricity. And this data came from the Renewables First Consultancy. Now we said that these prices were low because they were averages from 2016, whereas the price of wholesale electricity has now increased somewhat. So instead of using 5 pence per kilowatt hour, we used 6 pence per kilowatt hour. Now the first thing we needed to do was see how much electricity we were going to produce, because this here, kilowatt hours, is a measure of energy, not power. So we said that we had a 20 megawatt actual power output, or average power output. So although our installation is 200 megawatt capacity, our average actual power output is 20 megawatts. 20 megawatts is 20 megajoules every single second. Well, if we're producing 20 megajoules every single second, then we need to know how much energy we're producing every year. So we took our 20 megajoules every second and times it by 60 to get the number of megajoules every minute. We times it by 60 again to get the number of megajoules every hour. We times it by 24 to get the number of megajoules every day. And then we times it by 365 to get the number of megajoules every year. And we had the value of 6.31 times 10 to the 8 megajoules per year. Now we have a measure of energy here, megajoules, and we have a measure of energy here, kilowatt hours, but the units are different. So we need to get from megajoules to kilowatt hours. Now the way that we did that was by dividing by the number of seconds in an hour. Well, the number of seconds in an hour is 3,600, or the number of seconds in a minute, and the number of minutes in an hour. So we can do it in two steps. So we took our amount of energy, we divided it by 60 and 60 again, and that gave us megawatt hours. But we didn't want megawatt hours, we wanted kilowatt hours. So we multiplied the value by 1,000 to get our number of kilowatt hours per year.
Now finally, we need to multiply the number of kilowatt hours we produce every year by the amount that we're going to get paid per kilowatt hour. Now we said for our approximation we would use 6 pence, so we have our number of kilowatt hours times the 6 pence gave us the 10.5 million. Hopefully you've noticed that this income is exactly the same as the income from our wind farm. And the reason for that is because our actual power output is exactly the same. We use this in order to give us a direct comparison of the two installations. If we'd used capacity, then things would have been a lot more complicated. So we used actual power output or estimated actual power output. So what we can see here is that our break even point for our solar farm is going to be around 15 years. The cost was 150 million and the income per year was 10 million. Now after that payback period, the future profits are likely to be around 10 million pounds per year or 10.5 million per year. Now once again, these projections are based on the export price of electricity and in actual fact, there's government incentives that would increase the amount of income per kilowatt hour. And we'll look at those in the next video. All we're doing here is using this as a measure for comparison. Now another useful tool that measures different renewable technologies against each other is something called the levelized cost of electricity. And I'm just going to mention this briefly now. So here we have a diagram showing the levelized cost of electricity. And the way that I want you to think of this is this is the actual cost of electricity per year. So let's say, for example, we have a wind farm and the initial outlay for that wind farm is £100 million. Pounds. We're going to have ongoing costs associated with that wind farm. And let's say for argument's sake, it was a million pounds a year. Well, in order to determine the lifetime cost of different energy sources, we need to add all of them costs together. And once we've added all of them costs together, we need to divide by the number of years of service of that particular technology. So an onshore wind farm, as an example, has a life cycle of 25 years. So we would need to take the initial 100 million and we would need to add the million a year for 25 years. And then we would need to divide by the 25 years in order to get the levelized cost of electricity. This process provides a more accurate benchmark for comparing the costs of different technologies. The reason being is because although the initial outlay for a solar farm is higher than for a wind farm, the likely maintenance costs for a wind farm are going to be higher than for a solar farm, particularly if that wind farm's offshore. So we need to be able to weigh up the two in order to find the levelized cost of electricity. Now, the reason why I mention this is because the information we've looked at so far would indicate that a solar farm was somewhat inferior to a wind farm. But if we look at the data that we have here, along with future projections, we can see that in 2018, the levelized cost of electricity for an onshore wind farm is around 92 pounds per megawatt hour. And for a solar farm, it's around 100 pounds per megawatt hour. So in 2018, the solar farm is still more expensive but only around 10% more expensive. What we see in terms of projections is that the cost of solar is likely to drop more sharply than the cost of onshore wind farms. And the reason for this is going to be because of technological developments. The cost of solar panels, for example, is likely to drop dramatically as technologies improve and due to economies of scale. So what we see with solar is quite a dramatic drop in the estimated cost over the coming years whereas we see with the onshore wind farms are levelling off. Interestingly, we do see with the offshore that we see continuing drops. And one of the reasons for this is that offshore wind farms are getting larger and larger, and we get the economies of scale that we've spoken about previously. At the time of recording this video, some offshore wind turbines are somewhere in the order of 10 megawatts. So the methods that we've used here provided a comparison of the different costs of installation for different technologies, but the graph that we're looking at here takes into consideration the ongoing operating and running costs of different renewable energy technologies. Now, the more observant amongst you will have noticed that the levelized cost of electricity here is actually higher than the wholesale value. 
So based on this information alone, there isn't any incentive for energy companies to build a solar farm or build a wind farm because the lifetime cost is going to be around £100 per megawatt hour and they're actually only going to get paid around £60 per megawatt hour. So what we'll look at is how the government can incentivise companies to uptake renewables with a view to reaping the benefits when the wholesale price of electricity exceeds the levelised cost of producing the electricity. And we'll look at some of those incentives in the next tutorial.